He's higher than the mountains that I face. He's stronger than the power of the grave. And He's constant in the trials and the change. This one thing remains. This one Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Are you excited? Come on. This is good stuff right here. And uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I got two verses for you guys. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you guys about. And 29, 11 says this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And in Philippians 4, 13, it says this, I can do all things of this through him who gives me strength. As you worship today, I have a catchphrase I want want, want to give you guys this. And what's this? It's it's not over. Audience audience say this. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over over until you decide it is. 
Never give up on the potential of who you are, who, who you're called to be. Never give up on your dream that God has given you. Never give up on the person that God has called you to be. As you worship today, know this. Today, don't give up. Don't stop. Keep going. Know who you are in Christ. As you worship him, as you exalt him, as you praise him, know that he knows where you're at. He is not mute. He is not deaf. He is not, he knows where you're at. And all you gotta do is talk to him. All you gotta do is worship him. Worship him through the storm and worship him through the good. And know this. Don't give up. Don't give up. It is not over yet. It is not over yet. Father God, I pray, Lord Jesus, over this congregation and over these people. I pray, Father God, as we worship you, Father, as we exalt you, Father. We give you the room. Holy Spirit, we give you this place. Holy Spirit, we give you this situation that we're going through, and we worship you in the midst of it. It doesn't stop our worship because the devil wants us to stop our worship, but it strengthens our worship because we know this. Where I'm weak, you are strong. And Father God, we love you. We thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Really quickly, go ahead and look to your neighbor and say hi. You guys look really good. Look really amazing. Oh, my goodness. Yes. told me, he said, anything you put before me is an idol. Anything. Family, money, bills. Anything you put before the Lord is an idol. And, and I got this picture of the Lord just coming back into our hearts and just throwing those idols and just burning them. And so, Father, just today, I thank you for casting those idols down burning them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for sitting on the throne. And we refuse as your church and as your bride to put anything else before you. Father, you said that if we, if we love our life, we'll lose it. So in Jesus' name, we're all dead in Jesus' name. And we're alive unto you. seconds and can we just if you have you if you have your prayer language to pray in your prayer language just tell the Lord what you think about him just out loud okay
And so we put off the old, we put on the new, for Jesus is King. He changed everything. We put off the old, for Jesus is King. Thank you, Jesus. Just the voices, would you sing with me? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Your grace is amazing. Would you remain in an attitude of worship as you are seated this morning? And as you came in, you, there was communion there for you to Receive. If you want to begin preparing that in a few moments, we'll partake all together. But I want you just to listen to this next song. I want you to just listen to the words and an attitude of worship. Would you just begin to prepare your heart for communion as we remember the body given for you and me and the blood that was shed for our remission of sins. You might even want to just, after you have your communion open, just maybe close your eyes for a moment and just listen to the words of this next song.
Thank you, Jesus. You know, when we come to a time where we remember all that Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary and through the resurrection, when we remember his promises <laughs> that just as he left us, he will come again, <laughs> and that even while he's gone, he has given us a helper in the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. It's a time where we come and we remember. It's a time where we come back. Communion is not just a ceremony of remembrance, but it's a moment that we take where we enter into the presence of the Lord and believe that as we remember all that Christ has purchased for us and the freedom that is ours, and as we remember his many benefits, that we are actually partaking, that, that as we partake, God is meeting us in these places. This song was written in a time of uncertainty. Its author did not know, didn't have the answer, didn't know what tomorrow would hold. In a season of reflection, the story says not knowing what was ahead, with all of the questions and all of the doubts, this author chose to come apart unto God. He met with God in a quiet place. And it was in this quiet place that he was reminded of, of Scripture like these, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Your faithfulness, God, is as broad as the day. Your faithfulness is great. Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. 1 John 4, 18, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hebrews 11, 1, faith is a confidence that we have, that what we hope for will actually happen. It will give us assurance about things we cannot see. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. It's in moments like these when we take time to reflect and we take time to remember that our faith is built, our faith is renewed because we remember the promises of Jesus. We remember all that he has done for us. When we come into a time of, of reflection, again, partaking of the cup and partaking of the bread, recognizing all that has been afforded us because Christ gave, because he came, because he so willingly became the sacrifice for your sin and for mine. Oh, church, as we partake this morning, let this be a moment. Jesus said, often, as oft as you drink, as oft as you partake, remember. There's a lot of things going on in this world. There's a lot of different things that happen in our lives day by day. But I want you to know we're the beloved children of God. 
God has not forgotten. God sees and he knows. He knows of what you have need before you even ask. And his mercies are new every morning, church. Great is his faithfulness. He will not fail us. He will not fail us. So, Father, this morning, before we partake, we give thanks. We give thanks for the body that was given, for your blood that was shed. We are thankful, Lord, for all that you endured so that we might be set free from our sin and its wages. But, Lord, even beyond that, that we might know life, life abundantly, that we might know life eternally. Lord, that we might know you and be able to walk with you and talk with you throughout our day. That, Lord, when we are weak, we would find you to be the strength of our life. That, Lord, when we have need, we would remember and call upon you. And, Lord, you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, we remember that it is by your stripes we are healed. And Lord, even today we come, there may be some, Lord, that are weary in body. Some that need your touch. Lord, today we choose to remember and we recognize, Lord, that it is in your presence, Lord, we find fullness of joy. It's in your presence we find peace. It's in your presence, Lord, where we can declare with our lives, with our words, it is well with my soul. Not because of anything that we would do in our striving, Lord Jesus, but because we belong to you. So right now, Lord, across this room, Lord, as, as we begin to partake, Lord, and as we remember, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would meet each one of us, Lord, individually. That, Lord, we would come with thankful hearts, but, Lord, we would also be reminded and come with hearts of faith, recognizing that you are here today, Lord, and you are desiring to minister to us and our needs. So, Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks. And, Lord, we say that no matter what comes our way, Lord, in the life that we have left on this earth, Lord, before you come and take us to heaven, no matter what comes our way, help us, Lord Jesus, to be filled with the wonder of who you are. Help us to always be thankful. And help us to never fail, Lord, to ask. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. We rejoice in you, Lord. We rejoice in your work. And we put our faith in you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Would you take the bread this morning? It's all in the presence of the Lord, my friends. And you and I are able to enter the presence of the Lord because of the shed blood of Christ. Let's rejoice in what Jesus has done for us. Would you partake of the bread? Thank you, Jesus. Would you rejoice with me in the shed blood? the blood that gives us strength, my friends. From day to day, it's the blood that empowers. <laughs> it's the blood that makes us whole. Let's rejoice as we partake with thanksgiving this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I speak these words from the song again. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Father, we rejoice in you. We rejoice in your goodness and your love and your ministry, Lord, among us this day. God, be honored and glorified in this place and above every heart, every life. We love you, Jesus. We 
love you, Lord Jesus. Jesse, would you lead us through that chorus again? Lead us one more time through that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How blessed the Lord must be when he hears those words, you're all I want. Would you just say it together with me unto the Lord? You're all I want. Why don't you say, Lord Jesus, you're all I want. Let's do it together. Lord Jesus, you're all I want. Lord Jesus, you're all I want. Wow. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You love the Lord? Amen. Said, so do you love the Lord? Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you. Thank you, worship team, for leading us this morning. God is amazing. He is amazing. Yes? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Praise God. There are a few things I would like to remind you of this morning. And... Uh, just uh, things that are coming in up. First of all, if you are a visitor here at Valley Life Center, whether we're on campus or joining us online, uh, we'd love for you to connect with us. Um, you could uh, go to valleylife.love, find out information about the church, and, and send us an email, let you know you were with us. We'd love to be pray for you this week, uh, any special need that you might have. Also, if you're here on campus, you'll find in front of you on the pew, you'll find a card, a connection card. And uh, you can fill that out and drop that in one of the boxes uh, around the sanctuary. And again, feel free to write down a prayer request or something you might have. We'd love to agree with you and, uh, and believe for, for God's blessing and His best in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just checking you out. Some of you stayed up a little too late last night. I just see it. <laughs> Boy, there are some exciting things that are coming up and happening, and uh, you don't want to miss it. The uh, Mad Hatter Cookie Chatter, uh, ladies, is coming up, and uh, a time to come together and, and fellowship. They are meeting here on... Oh, I'm just... I'm testing you. I'm not looking at my bullets, I'm testing you. On Saturday, meeting here at what time? I'm so glad you're in unity on that. 1.30 Saturday meeting here and going to be going up to the Anderson house and some of you will be caravanning together and uh, I think the church van set it up that way. Just make sure they have enough parking but you ladies are going to have a great time together and uh, as you, uh, I know you're going to eat, I know you're going to fellowship, I know you're going to have fun and I think you're going to hear some testimony or testimonies so uh, God is, uh, God's good. God is good. So don't miss those opportunities. Also, next week, you want to be here. Uh, we are having a water baptism service. Uh, it's going to be an exciting day, Faith Christian School. Uh, a worship band will be joining us, leading us in worship. We've got kids from the school. We've got kids from church or whatever. I mean, we've got groups. We've got lots of people coming. So, um, And, uh, you know, I figure when you baptize that many, there is a good chance that you might get wet. And so, you know, if you have the need to bring your towel just in case, no, I'm just kidding, but uh, no, it's going to be a good time together as we celebrate what God is doing in the hearts and lives um, of people. Amen? That's what it's all about, right? Introducing people to Jesus and seeing them move forward in their relationship with Christ. God is amazing. 
He really is. I want to uh, mention to you, we, uh, you know, this church and it has had a long history of people growing up through and, uh, and receiving the call of God upon their life to pastor or be missionaries or, you know, in, in different ways. And uh, we had a couple, well, I should say an individual, but he is now married, so they are a couple. And I'm going to ask if uh, you bring the slide up there for me. Robert and Courtney Wilcoxon. <laughs> you know, um, it is fun. They are at Relevant Life in Salem saying goodbye uh, to the church there where Courtney has been involved, and uh, Robert has been involved here. They're just recently married, but uh, Robert has received his credentials, gone through his schooling, and uh, feels the call of God upon his life, and they are now the new youth pastors in Oregon, Oregon. I dare you to say that three or four times. <laughs> Oregon, 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 Oregon. <laughs> And uh, last week, we, they were here, and we got to pray for them, and there was a group after church laid hands, and we prayed for them. Uh, but I want to encourage you as a fellowship, um, you know what, there are, here's a couple newly married, and uh, boy, they're out on their first adventure away from home and going to be pastoring, and I think it would just be really fun for the church family to surprise them and bless them. So on your way out this morning... Why don't you write a check or stick some cash in an envelope and just mark it Robert and Courtney or Wilcoxon in the boxes, and let's just give them a love offering and to bless them. They're going to be setting up house and, you know, all the stuff with new job for Courtney, and, um, and I believe they start there on November 7th. So, uh, it's, anyways, it's, it's exciting, very, very exciting, and uh, it's been fun to be a part of that process. You know, Robert has been here at the church with his schooling, uh, you know, he helped in a lot of different ways. For a while, he was helping in the youth department, then in the children's department. He even spent time with me and uh, doing a bunch of odd things here and there. But it's just fun to see people grow, people become, and people follow the heart of God for their life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So commit them uh, to prayer, if you would. And, uh, and I know God's going to do great things in and through their lives. Yay! Well, congratulations, Romanjers. 50 years we celebrated yesterday. Yay! It's exciting. And uh, we had a lot of good food, great celebration, and, and, uh, and we heard some really interesting details about your life. <laughs> no, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. God is doing great things. I encourage you just to be praying for us here at the church. Tomorrow is scheduled our first modular to arrive uh, for the school. And then later this month, the others arriving. But uh, just appreciate your prayers that everything would just go smoothly. I'm also just pray, 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 pray. But I'm meeting with utility contractor tomorrow. This is very important to get all of our sewer and water and all those things run, and uh, looking for that uh, opportunity and commitment and connection. It's a big job. So uh, just pray for God's favor, if you would, for us. And uh, yeah, things are moving forward. It is good. God is good. Continues just to provide and to make a way. Well, kids, we love you. You are dismissed. <laughs> They're so good. They were hesitating and waiting for me. Praise the Lord. Would you take your Bibles this morning? And would you please, <laughs> would you please turn to the Gospel of John? Excuse me, Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. Sorry, I had John 15. I'm going to read that one too, but just differently. Luke 15. Yay, yay, yay. Oh, also don't forget, don't forget, I knew there was one more. At both entrances, you will find some baskets that have some flyers, again, that uh, communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ in a kid-friendly way. 
And uh, I would encourage you, grab some of those. They're in some packets, I think 50 in a packet. If you're passing out candy tonight for your neighbors and people coming around, why not give them a gospel track to go along with it? And uh, let's get the word out. Let's continue to make Jesus visible, right? Right? Yes, yes, yes. I don't care what anybody else says. Everything belongs to God, even the day October 31st. It's His. Right? It's His. So we're going to take advantage of every opportunity to sow seed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are so grateful. We are so grateful for your amazing love and, Lord, for the work, God, that you are doing in our lives and our church, Lord, here in this community and valley and around the world. Lord, you, you're, you amaze me. Just thinking about you being all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present, Lord, there is no one like you. And we honor you today, Lord, as we have gathered in this place to, to worship you, to celebrate you, but Lord, also to open our hearts to your word and that that you might speak to us this day. So Lord, I, I pray, God, that again, you would be Lord of this church, you would be Lord of this moment, and that God, your word would go forth and bring forth, Lord, good fruit in our hearts and our lives, Lord, that glorifies you, that honors you. And advance us, Lord, your kingdom. So we say yes to you, Lord, today. We say yes to you. And thank you for speaking to each one of us, Lord, individually as well as corporately. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to read some scripture again this week as we are talking about victory. How many are thankful we have victory through Jesus Christ our Lord? Oh, oh, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Oh, this is good. I can tell. Now, some of you need to just jump up and down. Some of you need to stretch your arms. Everybody needs to take a deep breath. Hold it. Swallow. Good. We got a few of those mosquitoes that were over there. That's good. No. Everybody look to your neighbor and say, I'm listening for God's word. Okay, before you're seated, let's read some scripture together. Some of these we read last week. I want to read them again, laying a foundation for where we're going. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Would you read with me? Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 24. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. 1 John 5, 4 and 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? How many of you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 2.14. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. 2 Timothy 1.7 God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And lastly, Romans 8.37 We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Who is it that loved us? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Church, I declare over you again today, victory is yours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin and Satan and death have been overcome because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He overcame it all for you and me. His love for us is great. Scripture reminds us that God gave his only son, gave the greatest gift that could ever be given, gave his only son so that you and I might know and have eternal 
life. My friends, we have much to again rejoice over. But if we are honest and we are truthful, sometimes as we walk this walk of faith, our, our, our minds get skirted. We, we move away from the truth or, or we begin to allow our circumstances and our situations to dictate things that are not true and things that we should not grab hold of. This world is speaking. People are speaking. And oftentimes what they are speaking is not true. And if we tend to believe those things or to align our lives with those things that are false, it will lead us astray. And we will find ourselves not experiencing, not experiencing and living in the celebration of the victory that's ours in Jesus Christ. God is doing great things. God is all-powerful. But I want you to know that we do have an adversary. Although God is all-powerful, we know when we go back to the garden and we look at Adam, when we look at Eve, we know that every man has had to deal with the sin nature when the fall took place in the Garden of Eden. But I want you to know God is greater. He brought salvation to you and I through the Lord Jesus Christ. And anything that we might deal with in this work or in, in this world or anything that the enemy might bring against us, I want you to know we can have victory again through Jesus Christ our Lord. God is greater, but we recognized last week as we were talking that we do have an adversary. And his name is the devil. Or Satan. He is not a figment of our imagination. He is not an imaginary character. He is not just someone in a cartoon with a pitchfork and little uh, horns. There is a reality. There is a spiritual word and there are spiritual forces at work against God's people and against this world. In fact, in 1 John chapter 5, the apostle John writes, we know that we are of God and that the whole world lies in the grip of the evil one. We recognized last week that not only do we have an adversary, but his place or his work is on this earth. His work is in the lives of people. We're reminded in scripture, and again last week we talked about binding the strong man, that we can't go into the house of the strong man unless he is first bound if we are going to plunder that that the enemy has taken of us, or if we are going to go out and win souls for Christ. How many of you know we need God's help? <laughs> we can't do it in our own strength and in our own power, but the one who is greater than all every man, the one who is the most high God, there is nothing too difficult for us, and he has given us a way that we might be effective in our call to go into all the world and preach the gospel. The truth is this, if you and I are going to plunder the enemy's house, if you and I are going to have great impact in our families, in this world, as we seek to reach people with the love and the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must understand that there is a domain of darkness, that we do have an adversary. And if we are going to bring people from darkness to light, <laughs> we've got to have God's help. We've got to follow God's direction. The adversary is real. In fact, Peter said that our adversary prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Paul comes on the heels of that and speaks to us, and he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Church, we must understand that not only has the enemy duped or blinded the eyes of the unregenerate. But he also seeks to gain a foothold in the life of the church, in individuals, people's lives, to bring about strongholds or to sow seeds into our mind that are not true again, that would keep us from God's best for our life, but also keep us from fulfilling our purpose and our destiny in him. The truth is we are engaged in a spiritual battle, spiritual warfare. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. He desires for the church to know that they are the children of God and that in Christ we are a mighty army that can go forth and pull down strongholds and see the kingdom of God advanced in the lives of others. Our God is amazing. Amen. 
Our God has given us a pathway and a direction, but we as a church must not be negligent or we must not be ignorant, again, to his devices. He comes not only to blind, but he also comes to bring unbelief and doubt and discouragement, trickery, deceit, and a host of other ways that would get us sidetracked from our call and sidetracked from who we are, or better said, who Christ is in you and me. Our identity. We learned last week that we need to exercise our authority. Right? We need to exercise authority in Christ, right? Never separated from Christ. It's always because Christ lives within us. And I remind you of the scripture where it says that authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Jesus said, I am giving you that as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the last phrase, over all the power of the enemy. My friends, yes, our enemy may be powerful and strong, but I want you to know nothing in comparison with our God. We, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, once again need to be filled with the wonder of how great our God is. Where we get off track is when we try to do things in our own strength, right? Or when we look to ourselves rather than look to Jesus who lives within you and me. Rather than looking to his word and his direction. My friends, we can't go and spoil his goods. He's seeking to master. He's seeking to control. He's seeking to destroy lives. But God desires to give his church power. God desires for us to exercise the authority that he has given us. That whatever we would bind on earth would be bound in heaven. Whatever we would loose on earth would be loosed in heaven. Last week we talked about, and I promise I'm almost done with the review. But last week we talked about the focus of that if if we're going to advance, right? If we're going to advance as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ being triumphant, turning this world upside down, seeing the souls of lost men come, this great harvest come forth, we recognize that our place we have to start is a place of intimacy with Christ. I remind you of Jesus' Jesus' words. <laughs> Jesus said to him in that passage where he's talking about us abiding in the vine, the focus is without him we can do nothing. But with him, nothing shall be impossible for us. Nothing. My friends, the first place for us to start is to remember that we have been called to places of intimacy. We must press in to know God more. There is a danger, my friends, if, if, if we go out to enter into spiritual activity or spiritual warfare, but we really aren't connected with our source, with our power source, right? The one who has all authority, we're going to find ourselves beaten. We're going to find we're going to find ourselves weak and not accomplishing much. But in Jesus' name, my friends, we are overcomers. In Jesus' name, we can fulfill our calling and our purpose in Christ Jesus. I love, again, Paul's words in Philippians. I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. The Lord has a destiny and a purpose for your life. He has a destiny, a plan for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's for good. He calls us to know him. He calls us to serve him. He calls us, do, I mean, do we know, think about it for a moment, just have you spent time before the Lord uh, asking him different things? Have you asked him, Lord, what is your purpose or your call upon my life? Well, if we get into the word, some of it becomes very clear to us, doesn't it? We've been called to what? Do the works that Jesus did. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read the gospel and I read about Jesus' life, That can feel a little overwhelming, can't it? I think the disciples felt that way when they were called to go into all the world. It was when they came and they waited in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father that they were endued with power from on high. Again, there was a boldness. There was a courage that came forth in their life. There was an anointing that rested upon them that gave them the ability to do the works of Jesus. To do the works of Jesus. 
My friends, that first action we must take is to grow up in Jesus. Grow up, mature in our faith. Become more and more like he is. Know his heart, know his call, know his desire for our lives. So coming to the focus today. If you and I are going to plunder what the enemy has stolen from us, and some of you say, so what do you mean by that stolen? Well, we know he came to still kill and destroy, right? How many of you know the enemy is not only a liar, but he's also a robber? He wants to take. The enemy has stole many things from believers' lives, from unbelievers' lives. But the Lord wants to bring restoration and healing. That's his desire, and he has the power and the ability to do that. My friends, though, when we think about, again, going in and plundering his house, some of us, we have kids, we have unsaved loved ones, and the enemy has blinded their eyes or has led them astray. They've accepted and embraced that that is false instead of that that is true. And sometimes we wonder, how is it, Lord, how is it that we are to work with them? How is it, Lord, that we see your work accomplished in their life? We can look to our community and we can see things about us changing, things that maybe never were before. And we wonder, how is it that we can make a difference in our community and see things that have been wronged, righted? How is it that a whole community can come to Christ? My friends, I want you to know that the Lord has given us tools. <laughs> the Lord has given us and gives us power to be his witnesses and to live as Jesus lived in this world, making a difference in the lives of others. Okay, I want to show you something this morning. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, and I promise you we are coming to the uh, scripture that I gave you, but in Luke 4, 18, some interesting words that we read about Jesus' life. How many of you know Jesus left heaven to come to earth? Right? You with me here? Just basic understanding of the gospel. He left heaven to come to earth, and when he came to earth, he was born of flesh, right? He took on flesh, and he became like you and me, except he lived his life without sin, right? So Jesus came with a destiny, with a call. He was coming to this world, not to condemn this world, but that through him and his work and his sacrifice, men could be saved, right? We're all there? So I want you to think about this as we read in Luke 4, 18. Scripture says, Jesus declaring this again of himself in, in, a, in accordance with what we read in the book of Isaiah from the prophet. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Now, I want to read it one more time. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. How many of you remember when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, reading in Scripture? Do you remember what happened in that moment when he was baptized? The heavens opened, dove descended, White representative of what? The Holy Spirit. And the Father's expression, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit. Listen to one more scripture. One more scripture. In Acts 10, 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Okay, so here's the thought. Jesus came and did an incredible work on this earth. He came, he lived among us, he experienced things just as we experience them. Yet he knew no sin. He came and he lived a life, he was unjustly crucified. And all of the mocking and all of the pain that he endured for us, that we might find freedom from sin. Freedom from death. That we might know the gift of God, eternal life. But if Jesus came to this earth 
And if Jesus needed to be anointed with the Holy Spirit and power to do his work, how much more do we, again, God's people, if we're going to do the works of Jesus, we've got to do it the way Jesus did it, right? We receive the resources from heaven. Jesus said it was important that I go away that I might send a helper to you. That helper is the Holy Spirit who would lead us and guide us into all truth. But as we continue through Scripture, we recognize that we need, and the Scripture talks about the people of God being anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power to do his work, to accomplish his will, to be his witnesses in the earth. Anointed. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. My friends, you and I need the anointing. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we need to be anointed with God's power for the work that we have been called to do. For you and I to be effective in all that God has called us to be, all that he's called us to do, we must recognize that we have, been, we have not been called to fight the spiritual battle on our own. We've been called to fight <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ, to battle in the name of Jesus Christ. The interesting thing is when we really become connected and in wonder with who God is, and how powerful he is, and that nothing is too difficult for him, our confidence as the church, our faith, arises. And we venture out under the leadership of the Holy Spirit to engage people and to engage in activities to share Christ and to believe for Christ's power to be displayed or manifested in their lives. And church, I want to encourage you. I believe that God is leading us into a day where he wants to not just amaze the world. He wants to amaze you. He wants you to experience his presence and his power in your life in such a way. (laughs) In such a way that not only are people that come in contact with you, not only are their lives transformed, but yours is transformed as you are enabled to believe for greater things and for greater things and for greater things as God glorifies himself in and through his church. I remind you of Paul writes, 2 Corinthians 10, our weapons, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Against the knowledge of God. You know, we go and read in the book of Isaiah and it talks about the yoke of the enemy, the yoke of bondage being destroyed by what? By the anointing. By the anointing. If we're going to see that yoke broken off of people's lives, where they can see, where they can receive Again, where they come to that place of of opening their hearts to the healing and the work that God desires to do in and through their lives. We must have his anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit and power. So, how does that anointing come about? Some things that I think are, are really interesting when we go and we look at Scripture we really find that it's in that intimacy. It's in that seeking after the Lord. It's in asking. It's in presenting ourselves as surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's in those acts, my friend, that we find ourselves, again, walking in the anointing of the Lord. I remind you of a scripture. You remember in the book of Acts, you remember there was the lame man that sat at the gate beautiful. And you remember Peter and John came walking and, and you know, again, make the long story a little bit shorter. Um, he was healed. And the lame man was leaping. He was jumping. He was praising God. 
They offered what they had, which was what? They were anointed by the Holy Spirit and, and power, anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. They walked with Jesus. They did the works of Jesus, and here a life is transformed. But what's interesting is this. They're arrested. I mean, you would think, right? Something good happens, and a lame man is healed. The religious leaders didn't like it. They brought Peter and John in before them, again, making accusations. And, and Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, gives account for what has taken place and gives all glory and gives credit to Jesus Christ. He preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. But this is what we read a few verses later in verse, chapter 4, verse 13. Okay, Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, the scripture says, spoke unto them, and he testifies of Jesus. And then it says, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. It wasn't in their own strength and in their own power. The recognition of what took place in and through their lives, the only thing that they had to identify with, with was that they had been with Jesus. Friends, I remind you too of the story of Mary and Martha. What is it that Jesus says about Mary when she is there with Jesus at the table in his presence? And he says, Mary has chosen the better. I remind us again, my friends, when we, we talk about being witnesses for Jesus Christ, going out in this world, if we're going to go forth in confidence, if we're going to go forth in a healthy manner, we must be a people who learn to sit at the feet of Jesus. We must be a people who press in and seek him with all of our hearts. And my friends, as we press in to know God more, and as we recognize that God desires for us to do his work, we can't do it in our own strength and power, and as we ask for God to anoint us with the Holy Spirit and power, he will meet us, and he will fill us, and he will glorify himself in and through our lives. Amen. Think about what Jesus said to the disciples those that were following him. They'd been called to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. But what was the next instruction that they were given? Go and wait. Go and wait in Jerusalem until you have been endued with power from on high. Church, we live in an interesting day. We live in an interesting time. We are seeing things and experiencing things in our nation and even in our city that we maybe never imagined. And we could go about in the flesh and try to bring about changes and do all of these different things. But the reality is, if we want to be effective in our call, and if we want to see people set free and delivered, we can't do it without God. We can't do it without his anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit and power, being anointed to accomplish the work that Jesus did. Luke chapter 15, something that's very interesting. We go back into the Gospels, and, and again, we read the story of how Jesus sent people out again, right? He anointed them, equipped them, sent them forth. They did mighty things in Jesus' name, right? Even the demons obey us. What happened when they were all done? They celebrated. They were excited. Do you want to see a joy return and I'm talking about, uh, you know, the a joy unspeakable and full of glory, a joy that's just bubbling over. You want to see it return in the church? Amen. There will be an overflow of joy 
that comes when we all recognize our destiny, that we're not called to do it in our own strength and power, but we allow the Holy Spirit, we allow ourselves to be anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. And as we start seeing people's lives changed, what happens? <laughs> Larry, you won't believe what happened to me this week. Seriously, I had like this much faith, but I walked in obedience to what God was leading me, and you wouldn't believe it, man. He was made whole, and his friends saw it, and they both accepted Christ. I really didn't have much of a clue about what I was doing, but I was yielded. And praise God, I was anointed. God made possible what would have seemed impossible for me. The truth is this, my friends, when strongholds begin to crumble, there is a sound that begins to rise that no man can contain. And that sound begins to go forth and the world, the church celebrates in it and the world begins to listen because they're hearing about life change. They're hearing about healing and deliverances. And they're saying, that's what I need. I've had enough of all these other things that don't work, that don't satisfy, that don't fix, that don't help me to overcome. I too need that anointing. I too need that empowering. Luke 15. I told you to turn there and I didn't turn there myself. I want you to just listen to this. I'm just going to go down quickly through this. Chapter 15, the parable of the lost sheep. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him, speaking of Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And then he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which were lost. When strongholds are broken, rejoicing follows. Great celebration follows. The parable of the lost coin. Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not, um, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which was lost, which I, which I lost. The parable of the lost son, verse 11, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my goods that, that falls to me. So he divided them, divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted all his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, their, all there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and enjoined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on him, put on a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this was my son who was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. 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 
My friends, hallelujahs are ringing. The sound that is going to come forth as people find their freedom and their deliverance in Christ, as the church rises up to who God has called us to be, and as we go forth in his name, it's not mustering up our own strength, mustering up our own power, but it's in living a surrendered life to the Lord Jesus Christ and recognizing that what he's called us to do, we cannot do. without his anointing and power. We need the anointing of the Lord. On everything that we do, on everything that we say, everywhere that we go, that the lost would be found, that the blind would see, that God would be glorified. My friends, we do have an enemy, an adversary, But I want you to know that the weapons we've been given, (laughs) the life that we've been given in Jesus Christ, the anointing, again, with being anointed with the Holy Spirit and with fire enables you and I to be mighty in God and to see lives changed and the kingdom of God advanced in a significant and a God-sized way with Jesus getting all the glory. And what a sound. What a sound that will come forth. But I think the question for most of us is what step do we take? How many of you know God only gives good gifts? Amen. The church just needs to start asking. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Our Heavenly Father, our good Father, He's not going to give you a snake. He's not going to give you or do something in your life that's destructive to you. He's going to empower you and me to be who he's called us to be. He's going to anoint us with the Holy Spirit and power to carry out the mission. And really all the Lord is looking for is just a people who will say yes. You don't have to have all of the answers. You don't know how to, if you and I will just make the decision, Lord, I'm going to press in to know you more. I'm not going to do just what I've been doing. I want to see and experience more. It means you got to do something different, right? I'm going to press in to know you more. I'm going to take time to sit in your presence. Lord, I'm going to be faithful to ask. Psalm 68, verse 1 and 3 says, Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them rejoice exceedingly. Psalm 60, 12, through God we shall do valiantly, for it is he that will tread down our enemies. My friends, victory is ours. Victory is ours. As we come to close the service this morning, I want to lead us in a couple areas of focus, of prayer. And the first is this. I think it is appropriate for us as the body of Christ to ask. 
Could we this morning as we're here in the body of Christ, could we willingly once again as the body of Christ just say, okay, Lord, we are your church. We surrender ourselves to your purpose, to your plan, Lord, for what you have destined for us corporately as well as us individually. And we recognize, God, that we cannot accomplish this without without the anointing of the Holy Spirit and power. We need you. Will we determine our hearts to recognize his lordship and that although we can enjoy life and we can celebrate and we can rejoice, our focus still always, as Jesse was talking about when we started service this morning, our first focus is God. Our first focus is the Lord. First place. And then this morning, I want us to pray. I want us to come into agreement together and pray on behalf of the strongholds that we see here in our community and maybe even the strongholds that we see in our families. Let's begin to believe for those things to be broken. And let's also recognize that even we, the church, even as Christian believers, there's an enemy who has sought to distract us. There's an enemy who has sought to find places or to set up camp in our minds with thoughts that are not pleasing to God and that are not helpful to us and that God wants to set us free from those things. Would you stand this morning? Church, I believe, I believe with all of my heart that as we will faithfully align ourselves with what God is saying and we will again seek and open our hearts to the anointing that we're going to see and we are going to experience some pretty exciting days that are going to lead to great celebration and rejoicing as we see the lost come home, as we see those that are abound set free. As we see marriages restored, relationships healed, This may seem natural to you, but it really isn't. It's spiritual. There's some that are in this room today, and, and you have, maybe there's some choices you've made in your life, but you find yourself in a place of, of poverty. And I mean that both in the spiritual and in the natural. The Bible tells us that the Lord is our provider. It invites us to ask and to cast. But there may be some in this room that is kind of like, I, I just, I feel like we're in bondage in this area. We're, we've got such a debt load. We've got, I mean, it just things go on because of circumstances or whatever else. But somehow it's like you feel like you've been bound up and you're not able to minister, to serve, or to do what you feel like God's calling you to do. I want you to know the Lord wants to set you free. But I want to also say to you, it's not just natural, it's spiritual. I believe the Lord would say there are things spiritually in your life that need to be repented of, need to be laid down. And in that repentance and movement towards him, he'll set you free. You'll find your freedom. There's some of you are struggling in your relationship with the Lord. And sometimes you doubt even your sonship or daughtership, if that's a correct word. And it's because of sin that you've allowed into your life. And the enemy takes advantage of it and sows that seed of doubt towards you. And so you don't call out to the Lord because you, you sense this distance. When all the time God is inviting, come, 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 come. If you just confess your sin, I'll be faithful and just to forgive you for sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness.
Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, right now I pray for any individual, any person in this room, Lord, that is bound. Lord, whatever that bondage might be, they know, Lord, in their heart right now, they sense the Holy Spirit speaking to them. They know it's wrong. They know it's not of God. And they know they need to be free. So, Jesus, right now, we call out to you. We declare that you are greater, that your power is greater than anything, Lord Jesus, that would seek to bind us. Lord, in this moment, I pray you just bring a liberty and a freedom. Right now, if that's you, I want you to repent before the Lord. If there's a bondage in your life, maybe you've given place to fear. Maybe you've given place to things that you have put before you that are not healthy. Maybe you've given place to anger or unforgiveness. Right now, repent before the Lord. Confess your sin to Him, and He will be faithful and just to forgive you. You can't break that hold unless you first put it under the blood. Ask Him right now to forgive you. Thank you, Jesus. I just thank the Lord. Thank Him for His forgiveness. You say, well, I don't feel it. You don't, we don't go by feelings. We go by faith. The Word of God says, if you confess... He will be faithful and just. Just thank Him. And right now, I want you to speak. I don't care if you do it in a whisper or if you do it out loud, but I want you to speak it. Bind that strong man in your life. Where the enemy's been at work. Say, what does that look like, Pastor? <laughs> Be something like this. A fear is what you've been struggling with. I bind the spirit of fear. If you've been struggling with perverse thoughts in your mind, bind the perverse spirit. If anxiety is something you're struggling with, bind that anxious spirit in Jesus' name. Don't let the enemy mess with you. You've been forgiven. You just gave it to the Lord. You're a child of God. You're a privileged child. And now release the opposite in Jesus' name. Lord, I release a pure spirit over my mind. Lord, I release <laughs> the spirit of peace over my life. Lord, I release <laughs> your love to baptize me, to flow through me, to enable me, Lord Jesus, to let go of the offense or the hurt that I've carried for so long. Oh, Father, bring each one of us, Lord, to a place of complete freedom. Complete freedom. Now with surrendered hands, can we just lift to the Lord? Lift them to the Lord and can, can we just invite God? Invite the Lord to anoint us with the Holy Spirit and power to be his witnesses. Would you just repeat after me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love and for your forgiveness. I thank you for the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help me, O oh God, to know your call, your destiny for my life. 
Help me, Lord, to be a world changer as I share your love with others. I call to you, O God. Anoint me with the Holy Spirit and power that I might be a conduit of your love and your healing power that I might go forth and bless others in Jesus' name. Father, I just pray blessing over this whole congregation. Lord, I, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you not only open our eyes to the needs and opportunity round about us, but Lord, that you would build faith in our hearts in keeping with what you're desiring to do. Lord, I pray you'd help us to live our lives in such a way that, Lord, we are watchful, we are prayerful. Lord, that we're aware of the schemes of the enemy, but, Lord, not fearful. Lord, may your church once again be filled with the wonder and awe of who you are. And, Lord, may there be a sound, Lord, that rises in the coming days, Lord Jesus, as we go forth in your name and we see in our families, we see in the church, we see in our community, Lord, even in this nation and world, Lord, that we see such a mighty move, Lord, of the Holy Spirit in and through our lives. That, Lord, transformation and healing would be experienced, that your kingdom would be advanced. Lord, that your name would be glorified in all the earth. Teach us, Lord. Show us the way. We give you thanks for this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Two things the Lord dropped on my heart. So I was praying for you. One is this. The truth is all of us, but specifically, there are some of you that are in here whose minds need to be renewed. The reality is all of our minds need to be renewed. But you know what I'm talking about. You need to get into the Word of God. You need to press in and read and study I would encourage you, if you have not been spending time in the Word at all, I would encourage you to begin reading in the Gospel of Mark. And I encourage you to throw a psalm and a proverb in there along with it daily. And Before you even begin, just take time and say, Lord, by your Spirit, would you speak to me through your Word? Would you lead me? Would you guide me? Would you change me? Press in to know the Lord. Spend time in prayer and daily invite the Lord. God, anoint me <laughs> with the Holy Spirit and power that I might accomplish your work and glorify your name. You have been patient. I'm telling you what, though, things are going to be getting wild here. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, that scares me to death. Me too. <laughs> but I trust God. Trust God, not the flesh. We trust God. Yeah? I'm sorry. I just enjoy being with you so much. I know Lunch, we need to get to lunch. We have all the other things for the day. I am praying for you daily and believing for God's mighty power to be at work in and through your life to the glory of his name. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Most importantly, God loves you. Let's go with him today. Thank you, Jesus.